Bunny Kingdom is a card drafting and area control game. There are three phases to each round and it is played in four rounds. In those four rounds, you are going to draft cards, which is how you figure out which territories you're going to, as well as hiding away parchments, which is how you hide away secret points at the end. There's also the construction or building phase. That is when you build additional cities, and towers, add resources. And then the third phase is the harvesting phase, which is where you add up your points from the golden carrots. So each square is a territory. Some of them start with cities and they are neutral until somebody takes over that spot. Some of them have resources like fish and carrots and wood. There are mountain areas where the lava flow is. Those ones do not connect. You can grow your fief by connecting adjacent territories. They do not connect diagonally. So in the mountains you need to be mindful of those lava flow spots because those do not connect. You can connect kind of a roundabout way but they will not cross over the lava flow. In order to earn points you need to have cities and resources. So as I mentioned there are some cities that start out on the board but then as you build there are two tower ones, some more one tower, and the coveted three tower. There are only three of these in the game. In the card drafting phase, if there are three players, each person will get 12 cards. If there are four players, each person will get 10 cards. And I'm gonna go over that briefly before touching on the special instructions for two player games. So in a three or four player game, you're gonna have your stack of cards and you are going to look at them without letting anyone else know what you're doing while you're looking and you're gonna select two to play. This is only in the three and four player game. So for example, I could select C6 and this three. So those are the ones I'm gonna play. Then I would pass them over to the next player. If you have coordinates for a territory, you place your bunny in that spot and then you have a discard pile. And then you're also gonna have a spot for your parchments. If you select to play a parchment, you're gonna put that face down. No one else is gonna see it until the end. And then since I grabbed this tower one, I'm gonna put the tower on there. Starting with round one, you pass your stack of cards clockwise, and then it alternates. So the next round, it'll be counterclockwise, and then back the other way, and then back the other way. So for this entire round right now, this would keep passing around until all the cards until the whole deck is gone. So everyone picks two, passes it on. You play those, you look at the next set of cards, you pick another two, and you pass it along. When you get to the building phase, that is when you're going to put your resources, on, like there's luxury resources and things like that, and so you can put those on your territories that you control, or you can build more towers. You can only have one item on a territory though. So like these cities that already have one tower, you cannot build anything additional there. If I choose to put this four on this mountain, I can't build anything else on this spot. The ones that already come with a resource, those you can build on. That's totally fine. Like I could build on this and that's okay. But you cannot place more than one game piece or token onto a territory spot. Once everyone is done construction and building phase, then you move on to the harvesting phase. However, you do not have to build everything during the construction phase, unless it's the fourth round because then you don't have another opportunity. So if you're able to grab one of these coveted three tower spots, but you do not have a mountain territory yet, that's totally fine. You get it and you hold on to it for a future round and then you can build. And it's the same with the resources because you might need to be on a specific place that you don't have yet. In the harvesting phase, this is where you calculate your golden carrots from your thieves. So you want different types of resources times towers. So my bunny here, he's sitting on a wood resource, but I don't control any towers, so that doesn't earn me any points. This one over here, I have one tower times one unique resource. So that would earn me one point. If I had another bunny here, it would still just be one because fish only counts once. You want different types of resources times towers to grow the wealth of your area. So in this one, I've got one, two, three towers, still just one resource, but three times one. 
And then this little guy, he's just sitting on a resource by himself, doesn't have any towers with him. Don't worry, the first round usually is pretty low scoring. As the rounds continue, the board's going to start getting busy and your points are just going to start adding up. You're also going to be hiding away parchments, like Master Fisher, where you get two golden carrots for each fish that you produce. If this was the fourth round, then I would get two, four, because I've got those two spots with fish. And this gives me additional points at the end when we reveal that. So that is how you play for the three and four player. Now, a two player game is played a little differently. Some people do not like this. We happen to enjoy it. It's a different strategy, which is one of the things that we enjoy is just changing up how we play the game. The only thing that's different in the two player game is how you do the drafting phase. The building phase and the harvesting phase, that is all the same. In the two player game, you're dealt a stack of 10, and then you are dealt a reserve deck of 10 cards. You cannot look at the reserve deck. Keep that on the side. So this would be the first deck of 10 that I would look at. Then you take one card from the reserve and add it to your hand. You choose one card to play and one to discard before you exchange your hand with the other player. You do not move your reserve decks. You do not exchange those. You just draw from that with each turn. In the regular game, I'd be looking at this, trying to decide which two cards that I want to play. But in the two player version, I'm selecting one to play and one to get rid of that's going to be out of the game before I pass my deck to the other player. If I know that I don't want them to have something, I'm going to be getting rid of it. Sometimes your decision making is going to be a little bit different. I'm definitely going to hold on to this three because of course I am. But then I might get rid of this two and put it over on the discard and then pass. And then their deck comes to me. I pull one off of the reserve and I do the same thing again. I look at what card I want to play. Let's put a play a C3. And then I'm going to discard something and pass. It's a little bit different because there are times where I look at it and go, okay, I totally know that my opponent needs this. I don't need it. It doesn't do me any good. I want this card. I'm going to get rid of this so that they can't get it. And that especially happens with parchments. There's a lot of parchments that will end up going over in the discard because you don't want someone hiding that away unless you're going to hide it away. So the rest of the gameplay is the same when you go into the building phase or the construction phase, as well as to the harvesting phase. So there are a few special cards to be aware of as you are playing. There is, there are provisions cards, which when you play that you immediately draw two cards off of the main deck and you play them immediately, whether or not they're helpful for you. The sky tower allows you to connect two different fiefs into one larger one. So for example, this one where I've got these three bunnies and a carrot resource, I can connect that up here with the bunny that has a fish resource. So during the harvesting phase, this would be three towers times two unique resources. When holding on to the sky towers towards the end of the game, you do need to be mindful of making sure that you have space to place them. Because if you already have cities, you can't, like you cannot put this on top of where a tower is or where another resource token is. You need to make sure that you are able to connect them. Another special card is the camp cards. This allows you to take over a territory without actually owning it. During the construction phase, you need to make sure whether or not anyone else has a camp card and there is a number next to it. Whoever has the lowest number gets to play, play their camp card first and choose where they are going to go. So if it would be helpful for me to connect a couple of areas, I might grab this spot. I'm allowed to occupy that space unless another player ends up playing G8. They can remove me and take over that territory. So it can be a gamble. In a two player game, some of the territories are going to get discarded. So camp cards can definitely come in handy, but you just don't know where that card is. So on the fourth round, once everyone has added up their golden carrots, it is time to reveal parchments. Some of them are going to be helpful and earn you more points. Like treasures are going to earn more points. This King of Thieves parchment is not going to do me much good because I don't control at least nine cities. So I don't earn those points. The Opportunist is a really awesome one 
because you can gain 10 more points if you are in second place after the final scoring. If I was in second place right now, I'd get 10 more points, which could push me past the other player. And like this one gives me one for each fief that I control. Now that sky tower connects those two, so that only counts as one. So then I would get four. You continue adding these up. When you go past 100, add one bunny to that 100 spot and you keep counting. This game takes about 45 minutes to play. There can definitely be some downtime with the thinking, but for the most part, things keep moving along pretty well. The first round is probably about the slowest because you just have so many decisions to make, but then once you kind of are getting places set, as cards come to you, you kind of know which ones you want to build onto if you spot them. So the first round tends to go a little bit slower and it's not as high scoring, but things get more interesting, a little bit more strategic as you go along. But there's also an element of luck of the draw that's combined into this as well. We've played two player and three player. We regularly play this with our seven year old. The recommended age is 14 plus, but through coaching her on how to play and how to think strategically on where to move and things like that, she has caught on quickly and does not take it easy on us. If this looks like a game that you would like to play, check the description down below for a link on where you can order your own copy of Bunny Kingdom or visit your local store and get it there. If you want to see a little bit more on that two-player interaction, we do have a video where Brian and I are playing the two-player version and you can watch that. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe and we will see you at the next game.